thank you for joining us again tonight for another ap episode of Pastor's Chat. Uh, please forgive me, I began to feel that because the thing is, is that uh, I think we all are standing in the need of prayer. And sometimes you got to go back uh, to the old school where they used to say that it's not my mother, it's not my father, it's not my sister, it's not my brother, but it's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And there's a story that I always tell uh, the congregation of St. Joseph as well as when I go other places, is that when I was in the streets and I was ripping and running, and I was doing everything but what people wanted me to do, what my family suggested I do. Uh, my grandmother was an individual who couldn't get on her knees to pray. And one night I, I came in from ripping and running and I saw her on her knees. And on her knees she said, Lord, I come to you knee bent and body bowed. And Lord, I just don't know what to do with my grandson anymore. I've done all I can do. And now I turn him over to you. At that moment, I began to think about my life. And I began to think about the direction that I was going in. So the thing about it is, even as the Lord works with us right now, one of the things that comes to mind is, is tonight, what I really want to discuss is, who is the blame? And we have a lot of murders that go on on the weekends, and we have a lot of things that happen. But the question is, once again, who is to blame? We can blame a lot of people for everything that is going on in our community. We can, we can blame the gangbangers. We can blame the dope dealers. We can blame the police. We can even blame the mayor. But the thing about it is, who is it that we are to blame? The thing is, is that I've gotten to the point of understanding that even as my wife and I had this discussion this afternoon, the thing is, is when will we allow the village to help make the village better? We say that it'll take a village for any community. But the bottom line is, what do you do when the village doesn't allow you to help them? And I say this to say that even on today, we have a lot of problems with when someone tries to discipline a child for when they're being disorderly or when they're cussing or when they're doing things. And when you try to get them to put them along the right path, the first thing that happened is, is that we got parents that step in and say, you can't treat my child that way. You're not just going to talk to my child any old way that you want to. When in actuality, they're not trying to put your child down. They're actually trying to give the child some guidance. And the thing about it is, is that we're not allowing ourselves to be a village anymore. We, I remember back in the day when there was a lady that lived across from her. Her name was Miss Dora Ellis. And Ms. Dora Ellis didn't care whose child you was. That if she caught you doing something, not only did she get you on the spot, but she took you back home to your mother, your father, and they got you. These are the things that we've lost within the village where we're allowing individuals to help our children. She wasn't disciplining us because she was a senior member or because she was given that permission. She did it because she cared. Because she knew that if she didn't do something at that moment, that we all would end up going in the wrong direction. But now, even when it comes to school, our schools, our teachers are no longer teachers. They have become social workers. Because they spend so much time trying to help the child through their problem. And as soon as the child does something, and the child goes home and says, Mama, Daddy, they did this. Instead of talking to the teacher or talking to the individuals involved, the first thing they want to do is fight about what that child or what that teacher may did, not knowing the full story. So the thing is, is that we're actually in the midst of all of this. We're raising a generation of children that think it's all right to do crazy things. You know, one thing that uh, I learned that children have a thing, they say, who gonna do the most? In other words, in doing the most, who's going to act the craziest?
to get the most attention so that they may get on YouTube and so that they can get a thousand hits on their YouTube. I don't know about you, but I've seen things even on Facebook where individuals are fighting just to get on Facebook, where there are teams of girls jumping on one girl just to get on Facebook. And no parent and people are driving by as I'm watching these videos. And all they're doing is shaking their head. Because now it has gotten to the point, as African Americans, we can't blame others for the problems that are facing our community. Because in actuality, we, are, we say it all the time, we lost Big Mama. Because Big Mama was that individual that would whoop you, then take you to your mama. A big mama was that individual that we had within each of our families that we knew that if big mama got a hold of anything that you was doing, that big mama was going to discipline you. And the bottom line is we have this to the point to whereas now children are actually out of control. Things are out of control, but what we continue to do is blame others for our problems. It's a community problem. The community is not holding the community accountable anymore. And the thing about it is, is that why should I discipline somebody else's child when mama just gonna come back and argue with me because I disciplined that child? You know, on my block, one of the things on my block where I live is that if somebody sees one of my boys doing something they ain't got no business, they will bring them to the house and tell us what they done. Nowadays, you bring a child to somebody's house, first thing they say is you should have mind your own business and let my child do what they were doing and I'll take care of my own family. If you were taking care of things, then your child wouldn't be out there doing the things that they're doing. That's why I'm calling on African American leaders tonight to sit down with McCarthy, sit down with the mayor, Give them an understanding of the community. And one of the things that I can really truly say that Daly did, Daly knew the community. Daly grew up in Chicago. He knew Chicago. And I say, who's to blame? How can you blame somebody that really don't even know what's going on? How can you blame the mayor when he don't even know Chicago? How can you blame McCarthy when he really don't even know Chicago? It's one thing to be a policeman. It's one thing to be a mayor, but it's another thing to know the people. And I'm a firm believer that if the mayor really sat down with individuals who know the community, individuals who know what is going on in the community, instead of assuming what's going on in the community, yes, the murder is there, but I call on the mayor tonight, even McCarthy, the bottom line is, is that you need to get with some of the old commanders, such as Commander Hiller. When Daly had a problem, he called on Hiller. Hiller knew the community. Hiller was a cop that walked the beat. Everybody knew him. Everybody respected him. People respect who they know. People respect who they know and they think they care about them. I call on the leaders tonight. Quit fighting, quit doing all this stuff. We standing up for this and we standing up for that. Sit down, call in those individuals when there were times when the, the, the murders were down. What did they do? What exactly did they do so that the murders would go down? Sometimes you gotta look past yourself and get to the point where you understand, yes, it may look make me look bad, but the thing is, what makes you look good is the fact that you reach beyond yourself to say, I need help. I can't solve this thing by myself. Yes, you got police on the beat. Yes, you're putting more police out there. That's why nobody can blame you because you're doing what you all you know how to do. But when you don't know the gang members, when you don't know the dope dealers, when you don't know the dope users, when in actuality, you got these people out there that are fighting these wars every day. Sit down, talk with them. Give them an understanding of where you're at and then they can help you. But the problem is, is that you can't help somebody in their community when you don't even know their community. The mayor needs to sit down with the individuals and get an understanding. Just say to them, tell me what I need to do. 
Quit trying to tell us what we need to do in our communities. Sit down and ask us what we need to do. Call Hiller. I'm quite sure Hiller would be grateful to come in and help you. Grateful to sit down and talk with you. Grateful to help you to facilitate a community meeting about violence in the community. Everybody don't want to fight. Everybody don't want to argue. Some people want to come to the point of solutions. And that's where we got to get to the point is, is that it's happening to the point to where it's become an epidemic and nobody knows what to do. The community doesn't know what to do. Parents don't know what to do with their children no more. It's time that everybody asks for some help and be open-minded enough to receive the help when somebody's trying to help you in the community. You know, I had an incident by my house where a young boy was being disciplined uh, at one house. And what happened was is that he ran away and he hid behind a garbage can. And there was a man that saw him hiding behind the garbage can like three, four blocks away from his house, brought him back to his house. And when the man came out, he asked that man, did you lose something? And the man said, no, I haven't lost anything. And he opened up the door and said, you haven't lost this little boy? He said, well, he runs and we don't know where he runs to. That was a statement right there. The man said in a very calm way, son, no matter what your child does, never count your child out as lost. I think that's the point that a lot of parents have gotten to. They just count their children out as lost. No child is lost. If a child knows that you care about them, a child will wrap their arms around you. It's when a child thinks you're not listening. A child thinks you don't understand. Everything we're going through is a problem of people not understanding one another. I know the gangs are out there. They blame it on drugs. They blame it on the weather and that people are out more. It's more than that. It takes more than a person just pulling a gun and pulling the trigger. The gun doesn't do the killing. It's the person behind it. When a person isn't educated about it, then they do what they only think they know how to do. And that's to feel better about themselves and what they do. And some feel better when they take another life. And the thing about it is if you don't know, ask for help. That's why as adults, we need to start holding our children accountable. I hold my children accountable. Everything they do, I hold them accountable for. Because with every action, there should be a reaction. With every negative, there should be a positive. Whether it's punishment or whatever. But I'm a firm believer if you talk, if you talk to your child and give your child an understanding and let your child know that this is not acceptable in my house and in my house this is how we do it you need to tell little junior you need to tell little missy that if you can't do right in here then i need to find somewhere for you to go they only do the things they do because they're allowed to be in the comfort of what they're doing you take them out of their comfort zone and what they're doing, they'll be totally different children. You put structure into their lives. If you let people know in the neighborhood, if you see my child doing anything, bring them to me. Bring them to me. Then I guarantee you if they see your child doing something and they know you're going to hold them accountable, like back in the day, if we did something and some senior member or some adult saw us doing something, we knew we was going to get held accountable. But the thing is, is that we can no longer run. We got to be open enough to whereas we begin to raise our children and hold them accountable. And as adults, we can't be afraid of the youth. We can't be afraid of these young adults. I come to find out if you treat them with respect, they'll respect you. And a lot of times, it's your approach to these children. It's your approach to that young adult. The same way you want to be approached with respect, you got to approach them with respect. And we have a problem with how we approach people. I always watch my approach when I see a young man doing something. Because the simple fact, you don't know where that young man's mind is. But I guarantee you, if you approach them with respect, 
they will respect everything you say. You ever walk past a you and said, son, don't do that, they say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. And then when that one is disrespectful, they recommend that one that's disrespectful because you came to them with respect. But we have gotten to the point where adults are afraid of children. When did that happen? When did adults become afraid of children? Some parents are afraid of their own children. I just don't know what to do with them no more. Excuse me? You don't know what to do no more. The thing about it is, is that sometimes we got to do what the Bible says. Spare the rod, spoil the child. And these are the things that we got to begin to understand. I'm not telling you to beat your child. But what I'm saying is you can no longer let your child scare you out of discipline. If they on punishment, they on punishment. If you give them something to do, they need to do it. And if they don't do it, they need to be held accountable. Don't be afraid of your child. We got too many people that are afraid of children. What is that to be afraid of a child? I had a young man one time, wasn't a young man, it was a senior man. And I was in a meeting and it was about mentoring. And somebody asked him, but as a mentor, how do you handle children today? He said, well, when I see them coming, depending on the group, I may cross the street. I said, I'm getting ready to leave this group right now. He said, why are you leaving? I said, if you're scared of them, you're training me to be scared of them. If you're going to mentor a child, you got to be able to give that child direction with boldness. We need parents that are going to begin to stand up with some boldness. That's why I asked the question tonight, who is to blame? It's easy for us to point the finger at somebody else. It's easier for us to say they aren't doing what they need to be doing. They aren't protecting us. They aren't doing this. They really don't even understand themselves. You can dispatch all the gang units you want. But unless somebody in the community say, hey, that house over there got some gang members in it. That house over there is a dope house. Start doing what needs to be done in helping. We have become such a hindrance that now don't nobody know what to do because everybody's shutting their doors, afraid of retaliation. There's always going to be, whether a good decision or bad decision, there's always going to be collateral damage. Always. But I would rather my children grow up in a peaceful situation than, than be raised up where they got to feel like prisoners in their own house. And the only way they feel like they're a prisoner in their own house is if they break the rules and they get put on punishment. This is the point that we got to begin to hold our children accountable. We have to find ways to show our youth that we believe in them and that we're concerned about their future. It's about education. We got to begin to educate them that no matter what they're going through at home, no matter what they're going through in the streets, no matter what they're going through in the community, that they got to know that the adults care about them. They got to know that we're willing to support them. We're willing to help them in their future. Every kid in the neighborhood should have some adult that they can trust outside of their parents. Everybody. And I call on you tonight. Quit blaming. Quit pointing the finger. Let us all begin to sit down and begin to get an understanding about this thing. One of the things that T.O. Hardiman, uh, director for Ceasefire of Illinois said, he wants to have some round table discussions. I'm all for it, and we need to continue to have them. Not where it's back and forth, where some chairs and some tables are in a circle or in a square, and we begin to talk out these things. We begin to deal with these things how they need to be dealt with. I don't want to talk to the back of nobody's head. I want to talk to a brother face to face. And I call on the mayor, call on uh, Commander Hiller, ask him to come in and talk. Superintendent McCarthy, call on. Hiller, ask him to come in and help. There's plenty of them that were willing to come in and help. Whatever it takes to get this done in our community. It's sad when I get calls 
from individuals willing to come to Chicago from outside of the state to help us with our problems, marching, do whatever it takes. I believe this is a problem we can take care of right here in the city. It's time that we get that gangster spirit off of this city because that's all it is. We have a gangster spirit. A spell has been put over this city. That anybody that comes to Chicago, they automatically think they're gangsters or they gotta act a certain way because they're from the city. You know, I've heard, when I'm in the suburbs, I've heard kids say, I'm from the city, we don't do it that way in the city. You know, a kid is a kid no matter where a kid go. Just because you're from one town don't make you no different than nobody else. But it's the mentality that we're putting in individuals. We need to break that spell. Just like Simon the Sorcerer had a spell over the territory, there's a spell over this city. And the spell is a murderous spell. And it's mesmerizing individuals to whereas they don't care who they kill. They don't care what life they take. We're taking too many. So now it's time that we all sit down. It's time we sit down and begin to have a round table. Call in individuals, ask for help. Call Mayor Daly back. Tell Mayor Daly, uh, Emmanuel, I can't never pronounce your name right, but Mayor, call Mayor Daly. Ask him what he did during those times. McCarthy, call Hiller. Ask him what he did during those times. Those are two individuals that are born and raised here in Chicago. You always got help. Don't ever say you don't. And if there's some mother listening, even viewing, ask for help. You know you can't do it by yourself. Single mothers, you know you can't do it by yourself. Ask for help. People are always willing to help. But they don't know what you need unless you tell them what you need. Let us stop blaming. Let us start moving forward. And I call on, if you choose, you can call me here at the church, 773-268-1196. 773-268-1196. And the thing about it is, is that we'll move on and I'll begin to help you. I'll begin to do whatever I can for you. But the thing is, is we gotta get together and begin to do what we need to do. So as I asked uh, Brother Jones to prepare to close us out, I'm gonna close us out in prayer. Our most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you right now for who you are, and we thank you for all the things that you continue to do in our lives. What we're asking, oh Lord God, as we call upon you that you release this murderous spirit that we have here in Chicago. Help us, oh Lord God, that we may begin to help one another. Help us to come together, O oh Lord God, and not be divided. There's a lot going on in this world, but one of the things that I've learned about you, O oh Lord God, where there's confusion, you can bring order. We're asking that you bring order into homes right now. We're asking that you bring order into the city right now. We're asking, O oh Lord God, that you humble individuals. Take away all egos. Oh, Lord God, that we may humble ourselves to come together to say we have a problem. And we need to sit down and begin to talk about it and work together. I'm asking that you open the minds of individuals from the past that they may come into the future to help us. That we may have a future for our children. Touch each and every adult. That they may put their arms around some child just to say I love you. And to know that they are there for them. We thank you right now for your guidance, we thank you for your love. We praise you for what you're about to do. For it is, and it always will be. In the name of your son, Jesus, we do pray. And all God's children say it together, amen. I wanna thank you for joining me tonight, and I'll see you next week. God bless you.